everybody and welcome once again to Daniel Sun's Real Tech Mod Pack. In this episode, what I'd like to do is look at the two things I mean I'm standing on. One of they're both from Redstone Automation. The, on the one on the left is the Red Circuit Designer, and the one on the right is the Circuit Assembler. But it's very hard to find information about these, so let's get on and start with that. Now, what we got here is we need some recipes. Basically, we need some components for doing all of this stuff. One of the components we're going to need is some solid redstone wire. And the recipe for that is are basically simply iron bars, redstone, and more iron bars. So six iron bars, not too expensive, and you get 12 of these. I've already got some made here. Like that. And from that, you can then make other components that we need. So we've got here a redstone receiving wire which is two wires with a piece of redstone. It's not too difficult, we can make some of those quickly. And we can also do an emitter wire here like this, which is two redstone wires and a redstone torch. And what these do is they basically, well, one receives a signal and one emits a signal. Well, let's just demonstrate that for the sake of starting up. I need to find a space, it's a bit full here. Let's find a space for doing this. So let's put down, for example, a torch angle. Yeah, I've got a torch, a redstone torch. Let's just take an ordinary torch, a uh, torch lever. Put down a lever here. And then that can receive a signal. So we shall take the redstone receiving wire here. Put that down beside it. You'll see it goes into the ground here. We can also then put the emitting signal here like this. Maybe one block away or however far away you want it to be. And then we can emit something. So we'll put a piece of redstone down just beside that there to emit it like this and you'll see that that joins in now between these two we can just put down a piece of redstone wire like that and that, to remove these connections you see you just take an empty hand and just right click the bottom one you don't want to connect so when I turn this lever on that's going to simply turn that on as well so it's there's no distance limits in this at all so that's going to have a power of 15 even though it's one two four blocks away from the actual lever so that's what these components are doing so let's just break those up now because we don't need any more that's why i've got the pickaxe in my hand here don't need it for, don't need it for a lever but there we are so those are red, redstone wires but and those are then used to make other components that we need in the assembler so before we start that one we've got these where should we go to next i think the next one is probably is these components in the assembler so we need quite a few IO bus relays and those are made from well fortunately I happen to have the ingredients in my hand a receiving wire and emitting wire and a, rest, uh, a lever so we can make 32 of those from that you've got uses of these ones in fact we could actually make a bit splitter and a single bit shifter which we don't really want to do at the moment I think oh, maybe I've got the wrong one I need the OR gate all right OR gates so we need a piece of stone and I don't have a piece of stone Ah, that's bad. I'll come back in a second when I've got some stone. Right, got some stone. <laughs> Don't ask me why I didn't take that with me. I do actually know what I did. So we can make eight of these all logic processors. And then from there, we, we also need to make a back, some back planes, which are basically, these. everything's using these redstone wires. So we can make some of those. And then we can also make some arithmetic processors, which are basically that. And I think I've got everything we need. So those we're using the OR gates. And we get two of these arithmetic processors. And those are the four bits that we actually need for the assembling machine. So let's have a look at that. See, I've already got some of those put in. We can put some more in. That one's full already, so it doesn't matter very much. We keep, it uses a lot of these um, iOS relays. So I'll put those back into here. So the next... So that's basically everything we need for that. But we also now need a circuit. So let's make a circuit schematic which is this one and it's made out of black dye paper and some glass pane so let's see if I can do that one I think I forgot the bits I don't need to I've done it already anyway I've got a few of these already made up circuit schematic and then we also need to put this some we need one of these a circuit basic casing and these are basically wood slabs and stone slabs around a, an iron ingot gives us this now that's the easy bit, let's get in the bits together. So the next thing we have to do is we have to design a circuit. Now the first one I'm going to design, I'm going to call it const. <laughs> and I'm going to give it a name. And the name I'm going to give it is, well, 
how are actually going to save the file? Actually, I've already, laid, I've already created one of these, so let's just shift click it like that. And I created this shift click that loads that file name into the schema, by the way. Shift right click this one, or shift left click this one, it will save it to a local file. And I've already called it, so it, it won't override it. But I've got another one, which we're going to just call nothing, get nothing. I shift click this one like that, and it's got nothing in it. So how do we build these circuits? That took me a while to figure out. So we can click this, for example, const here, and it puts us a const into the, into the circuit designer. And then what we can do is we can come along here and give this a, a value, so we give it a value of 12, like that. Now, down the bottom here, we have an output. For some reason, I always get difficult with that one. And here is an output. Now, we need to link these two together. Now the way you link these two together is you right you highlight the one you've got. So this is one highlighted, and you right click the one you want to connect to it, just like that. And that's it done. So then we can write this now by simply clicking on this to this schema here. So it's now saved in this schema. So we can then switch to the assembler by clicking this button here, and then it tells us what we need. It says it's valid and it needs eight of these IO bus relays and one backplane. So within all we need to do now is to take one of these circuit casings here and put it into this red slot. It takes off the bits and it's now got that. So what that's now this is basically a programmed one. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to put it down. And I'm going to put it down beside this uh, LED here, the signal LED, which shows you the value, output values of different blocks. So we put it down like that. Now it doesn't connect, but and the reason for that is because it needs to be connected. So here we have an output. So this is the output, and when you click on it, it tells you where it's connected to. B means bottom, and it puts a print, an arrow pointing out of the bottom. And this is the, out the top, this is the north, this is the south, and that's the west, which is where we want it to be. Okay, and now it connects, so you've got the blue connection on, the, on that side. So now when I turn this on by clicking the on offline button here, and click that on, it's now running so it's running once a second and we should get see a value of 12 which is what we do very simple so let's do something else now let's do take an input and put an input into this the next second I'm going to do I can reuse this uh, this one we've got here I can put everything back in again that I've I've been using or I can just just reprogram it so let's just reprogram it so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to have to unlink this one but to do that, I'm going to not do it that way. I'm going to basically put a NOT gate down, an input. I'm going to put an input in first. For some reason, I didn't click in. There we've got an input. And I'm going to make the input a NOT gate. So I'm going to link a NOT gate to this input. So that's highlighted. I right click this and it's linked in. This is where I want the output to go. And I right click this and it goes onto that. And at this point, now I can delete this component in here. And you can give these names. So I can say this is in. And I can say this one is out. I spell, if I spell it right, that is, of course. <laughs> we'll call this one not gate. And then we can save that to a file. Shift click it onto it, and it saves it to a not gate file here, as you can see. And then it's also a shift, I just click it as well, and then it's saved into the circuit here. So, what we then do next is we go back to the circuit uh, assembler. And this time we need 16 of these relays and two backplanes and one logic processor. So all we need to do is put this back in again and it'll take out what it's got. So it's taken out 16 from our 64. We already had some in there, of course, and it's taken out one more of those as well. So it's just reprogrammed it as simple as that. So now we can come along, put this down here. I, I'm not sure how clear it's going to work with it because you don't normally do it this way but this time we've got two sides so we've got here an input side which we're going to make on the east side and this wants to be on the output wants to be on, oh wrong way around this wants to be on the <laughs> that wants to be on the west side and this wants to be on the east side which has just gone past like that i think that's wrong i think that's right we should be able to see it anyway so if we look on here it should tell me uh, inside it that's right it should say me this is eight zero 
in. Oh, I've got that the wrong way around. Oh, sorry, yes. I want to go to the east side. Another one that's on the west side. Got it right first time. That looks better. Because you got the blue output. And I was going, okay. So what we can do with this now is we can actually put... It's night time. We can put beside this a receiver wire. We don't have to. We can just put down some redstone. Or even... Let's put down a piece of redstone here. And then let's put down a lever. If I've got one with me, which I have here. And we can put this down on this lever here like that. And it then connects into that. And then I can turn it off. And that will revert this one. It sh this should be inverted coming out of here. Let's turn it off. Oh, first of all, I've got to turn this on, haven't I? So now it's running. So that should be inverted. Then turn it off. And then you get 255, which is exactly the opposite of zero because it's an 8-bit value. In fact, I think, if I'm not, sure, if I'm not mistaken, we can actually change the output to being a 1-bit value. But I'm not quite sure how to do that. Let's just have a look over here and see in the designer if we can change any of these to being 1-bit. So here you are as a 1-bit value here. This is multiple input, and this would then be a logical, just using bit 0. So that would have given power 15, which will be just bit 0. So let's just take that one, and let's go and reprogram this again. All we have to do to reprogram this, of course, is to pick it up, come over here, and I think this will actually invert it to bit the one the, what I want it to be. I need to save it to the to this chip, go to the GUI and put it back in again. This time it won't use anything that we've already got because they've already used it's got all the bits in there it needs. And let's put it down here again. We have to set up the sides of course. So I'll try and get this right this time. So this is the east side. And this is the uh, that's the west side. That's connecting up right. Now we can turn it on. So we should then see an output here. Oh, it's still 255. Turn it off, and it's zero. We could do it the other way, of course. We don't need to do any of this. We could take this, don't need this LED display, or this wire in here. We could actually put a piece of redstone down here. Pick up those bits, I'll just throw them on the floor, and turn it off. And that should give me an output. Oh, why is it not giving me an output? Do I have to use a receiving wire here? Maybe I have to use a receive, an emitting wire. Let's just put an emitting wire on the outside of this. I think that's the, that's the emitter, isn't it? The green one, yeah. Put it down. And sure enough, it's lit up. Turn it off. That should go... Oh, oh it is running. Well, that's not right. Because it should be the opposite of this one. It isn't being the opposite at the moment. I don't know what I've done wrong. Anyway, maybe I don't need an emitting wire here. Maybe I've just... Maybe it doesn't work with what I've just done. Okay, never mind. I can reset it. No, it's not working as I expected it to. Never mind. <laughs> That's life. Pick up this one. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this lock design here. Now this is just a clock design as you can see it's basically it's what is this is a redstone torch going through a repeater into back into the redstone torch again so this is what i'm standing on is a not gate and that's just a, a repeater so we can do the same design so let's do that let's wipe this one off here now and clear it off just by loading shift loading this one in again it just clears it away and then because i saved it as a just a dot tat file so what we can do now is we want one in, we don't want any inputs we want one output and we want one not gate and we want one relay so not gate and this is a relay basically I didn't put my not gate down so what's happening here is the, if you go look out here the output of this is where it can go to so the output from here is actually this one here but this one is also connected to this relay so you right click that on there like that and this one here is then connected to this one so we can select it like that and move that up a bit it's probably easier to see and that's actually that circuit that we've just built let's just save this to the schematic go to the designer and then we should be able to put into that my 
block here. And now I have a circuit casing with a clock in it. Now that should work because I did test this one. Put it down. Put down some anything I like really. Let's put down some redstone. And then we have to turn it off and say which side is the, the output side. So it's west again and we just turn it on. So it should tick over once a second, as you can see. Because this device here is actually a slow. It's a basic one. Let's go now and take the next one of those, which is an advanced one, which is, I think, accelerated. Here we go. Call it accelerated. Can do the same thing with this one we can put this one into the circuit into the gui builder here it takes off the components and this one should go four times faster so let's have a look at that so just break this again put the advanced one down you see it's got the blue edges on it now so we've set this one to west again and turn it on now we've got seconds now we can actually reduce the time so we can have a 0.25 seconds and go on so now you can see it's working faster and of course you can then change the time here you can actually make it slowly increase it in fact i think you can go at any time you like now so that's one and a half seconds it's going to pulse so that is an implementation of what was going on here in redstone so that's converted these all these blocks here which is what two by two by no it's three by two isn't it by one two basically one by one small so we can actually do other things in here one of the ones that i would have liked to have done and i haven't figured this quite out yet it was the wrong place it would be a um i'm not going to save this because i've already got it saved would be a say a an sr an SR flip-flop and I think I've got one already programmed in here like that now an SR flip-flop is really I suppose we could get rid of these and just put not gates in here but you need two inputs on, on the show these sides so let's start again and just get rid of that SR trap and build that up from scratch again so we can see how it's done so let's just just click that and get rid of all of the schemas so we needed two inputs didn't we like that so you need a set and a reset so one of these we can call set which is called s and the other we'll call r reset this we're going to call an sr flip-flop i should call it sr flip like that and then we need normally in minecraft you'd use simply two not gates wouldn't you and you link the two together we can't do that in here what we can do is i think we can use nor gates no we'll use nam gates so we need two nam gates like this and you notice that these have got four inputs this is something we haven't looked at yet now we need to reduce these number of inputs to two each so we can simply right click this here and then that becomes two inputs and the same for this one because what we're going to do is we're going to be connecting the output of this back into the input of this one and then we need two output ports one for the q channel and one for the not q channel i think that's what they're called probably if i move them over here it might be easier to see you can just simply drag things across like that so let's do it like this i think will be all right we'll see so first of all, I would like to set one of these inputs onto this port here. So you see at the moment it's got a highlighted um, input port here. If I use the mouse button and scroll up, it swaps it over. It can go up or down actually, it depends which route you want to do it. So I want to link this one to this one. So I'm going to simply right click it there. So what I want to do now is to take the output of this one and then link it to the input on here but you have to use the other port so you take that like oops wrong way try it like that it doesn't matter if you misclick as you saw it works just fine so we'll take again we'll do the same over here we'll put the input of this one onto that we want the output of this one to connect to this one's second port like that and then the output of these two here 
go to each one of these like that. Now this would be, I think this is Q. And I think this one is not Q. So we'll just do it like, uh, I don't know what how to describe a not Q. We'll just do it like that for the time being. And then that's these things labeled up. So you've got a set and a reset and you've got your two NAND gates like this. And then they should go to the output gate. So that's it. So we'll sh so shift click that to save it to a file. And then we'll take this schematic and we'll put it into this device we've got here. The basic circuit casing so we need 32 of those haven't programmed this one up yet so we got an s off lip flop on that one so that was what this device was here for so i can put it down like this so now we have to program this one see basically it's got what's that one yeah that's a an emitter wire yeah that's fine connects up automatically so now these are the two outputs so you can see here we've got these two outputs. That's not Q and this is Q. These are the ones to how I labelled them up. So it doesn't really matter which one we're going to pick. We'll just pick one of those two. Um, certainly not the top. Yeah, that'll do fine for this one. And then the second one we'll put it going out there. And you can see now it connects in with the blue wire. So for the inputs, we'll have the set at the on my right hand side. There, and we'll have the reset straight there and then it all connects in and let's we'll turn it on now, I haven't got this to work but I think the idea is let's just get a quick reset on that and it should turn them off are these two levers on no they're both off it's working just fine as you can see these two buttons are labeled this one as set. So this is sets the Q output. So when it goes off, it sets the Q output, as you can see. When you reset it, it stays on the Q output. This one at the back here is the reset one. So when you do that, that turns on the front one, which is the not Q, and turns off the back one. Reset it again, and it stays latched. So that was that. Hello, well, since making this video, I've discovered a few things. So I think probably the best thing to do is to show you those rather than make a separate video about it. So let's start with those. Now, in the circuit designer, I didn't bother looking at this, but this is actually a tooltip. And every time you either scroll the mouse wheel, it changes the, the page. And that's sort of a feature I've not noticed, or you can click it as well. So it tells you about this, and it also it basically gives you all, most of the information I told you, told you about last time. Basic controls, simulation mechanism. So each cycle states of the simulator components are recalculated in the order from the top to the bottom, from left to right in every row. So if a component uses itself for a com or a component that comes after it as an input, then it will receive the signal by one cycle delayed. It still sees the state of the previous cycle which is indicated by a slightly different coloured wire. So we get the yellow and the cyan instead of the red and the blue. So let's have a look at that again. So there was, his design was for a simple clock. Oh yes, of course, I didn't tell you that the CD4017BE has uploaded some um, tests and some basically some circuits which you can look at i've included the where those are in the description so let's just load this one up and as you can see here it's a clock and it's all it is is a knot gate pointing back to itself and then it goes to an output and you'll see that this knot gate here is actually orange rather than being um red or blue i think it would have been red normally if you click off it i think you can do that and then there's also included in some here of these ones which were test scripts so let's have a look at simpleclock.test. So in this case, you've got an input which is called result. And he's linking that to a, a NOR gate here. I think that's a NOR, it's probably an exclusive OR, isn't it? So we'll look at the thing here. I think that is a, I can't see, can I see what it is? No. But I think it's, a, a, an, it's either a NOR gate or an exclusive NOR, uh, 
exclusive or an exclusive nor gate I can't see because of the line I have to move it if I move it then it changes no it is an exclusive or and when you move those things you actually get a, a constant which is hidden behind it I think that's not deliberate <laughs> and you can and then it breaks up the script so let's just load that script up again so actually it looks right so just click shift click that and it loads it up again so what I've, I think you do here is you can put in a uh, uh, a signal to actually step through the circuits. I think that's what it's trying to do. Anyway, let's do, let's just load up an empty script again. After pressing, oh, okay, keep pressing the button doesn't go back. And do this. And the next thing I discovered is that I press this output here, adds an output, so we don't have to go scrolling all the way down to find the output. Which I think is probably a little bit of a time saver, and <laughs> certainly because most of the ones you're going to be using up here. Now I created a circuit, and it was called JK for a JK flip flop. And let's load that one up and you can see it's a sort of a complicated but i got it slightly wrong <laughs> instead of having um these are actually uh these are nor gates aren't they these are yeah these are nor gates and i should have been using nand gates so the circuit didn't work so of course i can then put this i can then link it back in again so for it and remove this uh, this circuit and that should work and this was all to do with the sr flip-flop when i was doing the sr flip-flop let's have a look at that again it's, Let's load that one up. You'll see that here I had a set and a reset. In fact, that's actually incorrect. What it should have been probably is not set. Because it basically it goes from high to low and it, it rather than being a set. And the same with this reset, it should have been really a not a not reset. So it's the the one with the high the high line changing state. That's why they had to be on. So let's just um, let's just save that. And we could actually save that to a chip here. And one thing I didn't show I haven't got them with me, they're in here, are these three. So we've got the circuit high speed casing, a circuit basic casing, and a circuit accelerated. In fact, they got that order. And this one here, the recipe for that is uh, nether quartz and, and lapis lazuli over a, an accelerated one. So it goes faster. In fact, it's 20 milliseconds per day. So let's go and program this thing again. And I'll come back in a second when it's daylight. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> I programmed it. As soon as I pressed the stop, the stop button, it started to rain. So here we go. So let's uh, put this into the into the assembler. We'll put the high speed one in. The, uh, yeah, the high speed casing into here like this. And it takes all the components out, and it's ready. Of course, the other thing I didn't show you was how to get those components back again. So what you do to do that? Let's go back to the. Yeah, let's go to here and then. Let's just click this as being um what I want to do is to em put the empty one in like this. So I've got an empty an empty design, just shift click it in, and then let's program that onto this onto this box here. And it takes everything back in again. So we get everything back. So you don't lose any of the components at any t at any stage. Let's go back to the GUI designer. Let's put the SR flip in again. My typing speed's dreadful at the moment. And let's program this one. And let's put it down here. I'll simplify this a little bit, I hope. Oops, I'm not trying to do anything like this. So we need the the input set. Now the set one is I've programmed onto I've labelled this as being set here like that. So that is the this direction, which I think is the east side, but I'm not sure. I always get them a bit confused, don't I? So it's fairly enough. You can easily see like that. That's the right one for that one. And then this one will be the, the reset button, which comes up at the front of us like this, that side. And then the output, not Q, is the one at the, I think that's the one at the front as it happens. We'll just double check it because I've labeled that as well. Q is on the, is, on the, is this one at the back here? Let's have a look at that one. And therefore this one is on this side here like that. So they're all labeled up and ready to go. So now I just need to start this. Let's make sure these were both on because that's the valid state and run it. And as you can see, I've still got one second tick interval here. So when I change these states like this, so this is the set uh, which is on. And let's just turn the reset on here. 
that goes on and this goes off as you see it's quite slow but let's click along here now and then change this down to 0.5 seconds 20 milliseconds and go back again and do the same with the set this time it should go a lot faster when it goes across now of course I have to click the right button of course as you see it doesn't take that that length of time to do it um, and the last thing I want to show you was this um, if you remember I had a problem when I was putting down a, a not gate so let's load up the not gate scheme again if I spell it right of course I have to spell it as not not mot done it twice let's load up this one so this was a simple in, an input and excluding the app putting the output on here and I changed this this chip here instead of having any bit as being a logic in I changed it to being a bit zero as being a logic in so let's just take the uh, basic circuit and let's program that one let's just save that to this circuit schema here so it's now not gate as it says something let's go put it in and program this one in Now this is actually, and what happened last time is it didn't work. And I was going, I don't understand why it doesn't work. In fact, what has happened is it's actually crashed. <laughs> so let's see if this actually works this time. So this is the input so that's on the left-hand side of us. And this is the output, which is on the right-hand side of us. Like that. And then we run it. It should be off because that's gone on. Turn it over. It's now on, as you can see. So that's actually behaving correctly as I expected it to do confused me a lot last time to so get into a position you can see both at the same time there you go and what I didn't try is also doing it this way because that's a bit 15 so I'd move this away one further then it shouldn't have worked let's just try that in fact because that's what I did want to turn let's put that down there just remove this one and get a piece of redstone so that's got a value of 15 so if we come over here and get another piece of redstone dust that is and put that down this which should give me a value of 14 and that shouldn't tick open Duh. and that shouldn't tick over like this so when I click that on this shouldn't go off it should stay whatever state it is which is exactly what, how I expect it to behave you see because this says it's got a power of 14 which means that bit zero is actually clear now I think we can also do that using the lever let's pick this up over here and here we've got this lever and we've got an output led on here like this so let's just put this down here like that and then do the same thing then we need to program the input so it's on the left hand side and the output so it's on the right hand side like that let's start it so you see now it's got a value of 255 because all of these bits are actually off i think so if i move this one here i'm not sure which one it is i have to move whether the bottom one is that one or this one or even this one there we go so that's so that's obviously bit zero as you can see so moving this one up and down changes its state like that I think I missed that one yeah well you can move any of the other bits and it doesn't change the state so I think that explains that better now so it's only that bit so that's bit zero on this thing so that must so that's it well that's it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it it's been an interesting and quite a lot of fun to make um it was quite a reasonable few days ago when i actually made the first part of this video so until next time i wish you all the best bye for now